So hi, hello, good evening, everyone. This is Mohit here, uh, uh, host at uh, Master of Growth, and uh, today with us we have Avinash uh, from a really cool company. Uh, as th th that's what came into my mind when uh, I went through their website and and their products and their story. So uh, he's from Shararat. He's the founder, co-founder at Shararat. Uh, been doing this for a couple of years. And uh, would love to have the next uh, uh, 25, 30 minutes of discussion with him, learning uh, how he has grown, uh, what are the challenges he has faced, how has he overcome them, what are the foreseeing challenges, uh, how is starting up been, uh, what would he do if, if not this. So things like that and uh, just help you uh, other founders learn from journeys of uh, such uh, good, young, brilliant companies. So, hi Avinash, uh, thanks for joining this and uh, we are glad to have you at Master of Growth. Thanks, Mohit. Glad to be part of the uh, forum and would love to share my experience, uh, whatever I have. It's a, of course, entrepreneurship is a lifelong journey, but like whatever uh, stage I am and learnings I have, would yes. love to share with you. Glad to so, uh, Avinash, just a, a quick introduction about Shararat. Uh, I have known it, but for the viewers, a quick introduction and how, what's your journey been starting up uh, Shararat? Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, we started uh, Shararat uh, sometime in the year 2016. So, me and my partner, who happens to be my life and business partner, both. So, we both uh, started up uh, together. So, it's, we are a couple pronouns, something uh, which has got, uh, uh, you know, trendy uh, nowadays. So, we are a couple of entrepreneurs. So, which has its own challenges, which I would love to share if someone is a couple. So, you know, how to manage uh, business uh, and the personal life. But anyway, we started in year 2016. Uh, we had been a bootstrap company for the initial few years. It's been just recently that we have done a small angel uh, round, but we have been a bootstrap company. So, we started off initially along with our jobs, tested the market and all. And once we uh, got a good response, we got full tragically into it. So the primary uh, vertical we are into is into fashion business. So Sharanat is a fashion brand, uh, primarily into sleepwear and loungewear category. So and we have been our digital uh, first uh, brand. So we are there on all the major marketplaces of India, including Amazon, like uh, Misho, Ajio, starting on it very soon, and have our own uh, website and uh, WhatsApp store. So yeah, the journey has been exciting. So a lot of learning, uh, e the commerce industry has been evolving over the years. The time we had started it was just like you know, shaping up. So now there are a lot of changes. The system has evolved. Government regulations uh, has evolved. The channels, each channel has its own uh, challenges. And now, so we are look, now uh, focusing on building our B2C vertical stronger. So we are there on market facing, but along with in short, this has been great. So, yeah, uh, Shararat is into uh, mostly uh, basically women uh, sleep wear and loungewear. Uh, yes, as of now, we are dealing with into those uh, products. Audience, so, but the idea is to uh, make people more playful. That we believe that if people stay playful and if they are you know being naughty uh, in cool sense, so they will be more more happier. So that's the idea we want to build upon. So the kind of prints we do, the kind of color selections we do, they are very, you know, playful and very happy uh, kind of thing that people will feel nice. Uh, the fabric selection is as such. So that's the idea that we want people to be more playful and accordingly they can be happier. So uh, that's the philosophy of Shaharan. So as of now, women is the audience that we are catering to. But gradually, we uh, tend to expand it to men's loungewear, kids' uh, uh, casual wear too. In a great, great. So, yeah, uh, on the front of it, it's been roughly a sixth year in progress or six years since you're in this business. You were, uh, you started before the D2C boom or uh, the boom of uh, direct uh, to commerce. It was uh, majorly Amazon sellers and Flipkart in those uh, 14, 16 era. So, uh, how did you start up with this? Uh, like, what was the push which made you think that, okay, uh, we'll do this for the next six years into uh, in, into the domain you are in. And uh, sure, sure. yeah, after that. Sure, sure. So before that, uh, I would like to mention that I, uh, we are a first generation entrepreneur. Like my 
family has been into government service. So it's not like that we had a, a you know, a business mentorship or a business or SAP and all that. So it has been a very hands-on learning. But I always had this thing that I want to do and the business uh, was something that, you know, which always pushed me ki, I want to do something of mine. So that's how I started on my career working with startups and all. So I had been looking, exploring uh, certain ideas, certain domains, kya change kar sakte and all. So in year 2015, uh, we got married. So that's how, like, you know, we thought, yeah, let's explore something together. So my wife comes from a fashion background. So she had that uh, domain expertise. And I had been a business professional. I studied that uh, you know, with my management course. And I'd been into uh, managerial positions. So we uh, zeroed down on e-commerce as a, as an industry. We did our research that uh, you know, it has the industry has much award overseas and in India, may Amazon and all that, uh, you know, uh, advertising quite aggressively. So we realized that it may be a good time, the kind of behavioral changes were happening in the country and all that to get into an e-commerce uh, domain would make sense in the long run. So that's how that, you know, my wife coming from the fashion background, we, that's how we uh, narrowed down on the fashion industry. And the platform was in general, it was uh, catching up. And uh, we realized ki, malab, it'll be easier to manage your e-commerce business being of the, you know, the, the general feature, it's 24 by 7. You can, you know, uh, it's a cloud system. So those kind of things. So we, uh, that's how we, uh, you know, let's start a fashion business or for e-commerce. So yeah. Great. So yeah, that led you into starting this up. But uh, on on the journey front, uh, normally where many of us or almost all of us face the biggest challenges, especially not being from a, a business background and not having that network. Uh, of course, operations is one part of uh, getting the supply chain right. But uh, getting those initial customers, maybe in your case, it would be the initial 500 customers to get uh, right. yourself get that confidence that okay this is something which I, I should pursue so first is how did you get that confidence at what level that okay this is something which I'll be doing for next couple of years uh, that moment and uh, second is this that how how did you get to that uh, uh, sure. point sure sure so it was like you know initial things you can have basic research and all the kind of resources you may have and then uske baad mein to kya hai ki once you take a jump into the sea, you actually start learning uh, swimming. So that's what it happened with us. See, we narrowed down on all those things. We got our account registered on Amazon and stuff. And uh, the moment we got our first order, that was the real thing. You know, they're like, you know, it can really work. Because uh, getting to that stage where a customer can actually place the uh, order had a lot of you know, background working. We had to source the product. We had to get the photo shoot done. Uh, the compliances part, getting the listing done and all that. And what was first-hand learning. So all those things were finally culminated, culminated into first sale. So that was a real kick. And uh, of course, you have to initially, um, you know, do uh, request your friends and family to place the order so that we understand how has been the customer experience, how is it looking. And uh, the, the good part of e-commerce is that uh, the, uh, the competition is very open. So it's not like the other person, what I do, I can easily see what price are they selling, what kind of designs they are doing. So it makes your, uh, you know, competitive uh, working quite easy that, you know, at what price you can uh, sell and all. And then it's up to you that what kind of uh, sourcing you can do. So that was the thing that when the first sale came in, we uh, we picked it from there. Yeah, this is packing. So initially what happens is like we launched, let's say, 50 styles, but not every style would pick up. So, but, you know, you get that learning, uh, that maturity, I would say, which comes over a period of time. Initially, it's more of excitement, you know, we are selling. But the, the sooner you can have that maturity, business maturity, it's not just sales. There are a lot of, you know, back-end working you have to do. You have to see the sourcing, you have to do the inventory planning, you have to manage the funding, you know, how do you manage the team, the operation. That's what, uh, in my experience, I feel, what uh, makes a business sustainable. Otherwise, there are a kind of uh, success ratio startups have, especially in the initial uh, five years, is very low in India. So my learning is that, you know, we people with entrepreneurs at times focus too much on the sales and the marketing side of the business, which is just the top line and the kind of, you know, brand awareness is happening. But uh, at the same time, the entrepreneur needs to focus on the numbers, the kind of bottom line they are doing the kind of supply chain they are building, how smooth are your operations, which are very monotonous and uh, 
uh, you know, non-exciting work. Dealing with numbers and all is definitely not easy. So, वो सब चीजें थोड़ा सा अगर focus में रहते हैं तो sustainability आ जाती है. That we learned, uh, you know, after burning the man, in शुरू में we also had our share of losses, share of you know bad experiences of uh, the dead inventory piling up, or uh, you know relying too much on one particular vendor. So those kind of issues were there. But gradually we started uh, uh, fine tuning those processes. We hired a CA. Then eventually we had a full time accountant. So you know the financial discipline started coming in. So that's one important learning we had that you know you should have financial discipline in your business. So yeah. Great, great. Yeah, totally. So uh, while you are building this business, uh, there would be a certain set or a segment of customers which would. Uh, Like like that curve which we have studied early adopters, the late adopters, uh, the laggards. So, how how did you uh, finalize on your on your ideal customer profile? Like, uh, how did you double down on that? Uh, was that something which happened by chance, or you had figured it out that okay, these are the kind of people we want to target. We do outreach to these people. We show ads here. Just that initial ten uh, thousand. How did you get your ICP ideal customer profile? Sure, sure, sure. So since uh, you know e-commerce as an industry was evolving and uh, we ourselves being a first generation entrepreneur, so we did a lot of experimentation. One thing was uh, being a fashion business, we experimented with the number of styles. We are a first, मतलब कुछ में मतलब जैसे we are into streetwear and loungewear category, so no let's uh, launch uh, simultaneously ten styles. Uh, pajama also will launch, a night set also will launch, and uh, this kind of thing. And also try out with different price points. The which price points would move faster. So those were two things that uh, you know worked for us, and we uh, had a good insights, so especially on the price point, like especially for mass market uh, marketplace like Amazon, Flipkart, and all. Like our learning has been that you know our products lower than one thousand move faster, and then we had support from Amazon and these marketplace teams as well. You know they keep they kept on sharing the insights. You know which price points are moving, or which geography is giving better results. Like that's something uh, an important learning. Like uh, we operate out of Delhi NCR, so but our product was moving quite well uh, in uh, Bombay and uh, uh, South region that way. So that way we expanded our uh, geography. We took up our local warehouse in uh, Bangalore in Bombay. That way we were able to reach out to them. So those all those uh, demographic learnings, you know, which happened over a period of time. You know, you experimented with some styles. You you know, you do a small experiments. You can't you know put entire investment in one particular uh, style. We experimented with styles, saw the initial attraction, ah, uh, realized the price points, the geography, uh, you know, learnings, and then accordingly we started building up on those. Uh, yeah. So that's all. Just. And uh, just uh, going a bit deeper on this, let, let's say uh, in your that growth journey, where have you had your key hires, uh, which helped you sustain that growth? So, so for example, you told that initially you had a lot of compliance things. So at one point you had to hire a hire a uh, accountant in house to just manage that. Then maybe you would have got someone in for supply chain, then for marketing. So at what stages did you get those uh, key hires in place? Yeah. So initially, as I mentioned, that we started it off as a part-time thing to to test the mala, test the water. So once we had the basic confidence that things are moving fine, we first hired a operations person who can actually pack the orders and you know manage the inventory and all along with the office work. That was a very simple hiring. We did care day-to-day operation because being into e-commerce, there would be intensive day-to-day operation. Now we have many a tools. We have For developed uh, logistics and warehousing system, but uh, six year bank was a you have to pack on your own, you have to manage the inventory and all that. So we started off with uh, those hiring, and we got some agencies on board. We didn't have resources to have everything uh, in house, so we got a marketing agency on board who would help us out uh, with listing on this market places, how to advertise on those things. Because as I mentioned, that you can't have uh, learn everything on your own. So we got uh, those domain experts on board. We had a CEO on board who helped us out with the compliance returns and all those things. So that's how we kept on growing. Then once we started with the operations team, then uh, we had a. And since my wife uh, comes from, uh, my partner comes from fashion background, 
So she was looking after the supply chain, which is the most critical aspect of at least for our industry that uh, how efficiently can we manage this trend? Because for this online market, uh, how it happens is that, you know, once you start advertising one particular listing, it comes on top, then you have to maintain that position. For that, you have to fight with the competition for pricing, advertising, you know, and this search system. But at the same time, you have to manage your supply line also that you should have enough stock at right price, at right point that you are able to uh, hold on to that position, which has been a challenge for us also. Initially, we were, you know, uh, sourcing it from outside vendors. So at times, they were not able to give a consistent supply. So eventually, we started developing in-house capabilities. We set up a small factory, did a direct factory tie-up. So those kind of... Uh, so when was that small factory? Was it after uh, two yeah, years, three years? Uh, yeah, so uh, we didn't immediately set up the factory. Like first, we had an outsource bank. Then we got into job work to begin with. Like a job work in the sense that we got a fab, buying the started buying the fabric and then giving it to the outside labor. That happened, uh, I believe, after eight nine months, and then after a couple of years, we set up our factory. Then then we became confident that okay, now we have consistent demand and uh, we understand uh, how the <clears throat> I'm sorry how the supply chain can be managed. So after a couple of years, we set up our you uh, know uh, manufacturing. Great and. Uh... Just going a bit uh, different direction. The challenges which which uh, come with especially heavy operations in intensive businesses and uh, fashion. Fashion is more prone to these operational challenges in terms of customer design, uh, mindset and things like that. So uh, if you had to rate like the top challenges which you uh, encountered in terms of e-commerce and your industry, uh, what were these? Like something which comes on top of mind everyone is uh, returns uh, fashion fashion yeah. return is among the highest and many times the material could be damaged uh, operationally managing the returns and production is a big challenge itself so uh, something on that line where what are the challenges you faced of a uh, operational point of view uh, how did you handle them so that they did not become something which could eat your company up so uh, just just sure. light on that so for our industry, I would say, uh, you know, understanding the system of e-commerce is very important. How does business happen on Amazon? It's not just that you, you know, buy a product, put it on display and the sale happens. There are a lot of algorithms, a lot of, you know, processes you need to understand. The first step is to understand the system of that particular marketplace or whatever you are getting into uh, properly. That, you know, what is the listing guidelines? What are the sales, uh, you know, boosting activity you can do over there? So each marketplace, you know, has a has very well-defined knowledge uh, forum where you can learn all those things. So understanding the system is uh, very important. Talking specifically about returns and all, of course, uh, e-commerce industry as such was evolving. So uh, marketplace were pushing, uh, you know, customers to buy uh, online for that. Of course, returns was a, was a like, you know, uh, they had to provide and it was a free return. So customer had all the liberty to, you know, just try out and then return it. And especially for our category, which at times had the longer return period of ranging from 15 days to 30 days. So there are many uncertain people buy it, use it, and send it back. But so somewhere, uh, one thing like, uh, so they would be, you, know, you can put in control, but still they would be things. So you, each product category may have different return rate. But that over a period of time, we realized what will be our return and that we built it in our costing. Yeah, itna person to return aana hi aana hai. So, uske liye, like, you know, less, less budgeted in our costing and the selling price itself. So, that was one learning uh, we had. Another thing, like, you know, in terms of our design selection, we intentionally got into styles and uh, categories which would comparatively have lower returns. Like, for example, like kurtis and kurtas and all in general would have higher return because sizing rehta hai, logo ka body type ke saap se fitting by issues rehta hai and all that. So initially we selected the kind of style which would can be more three styles. So you know, at one single style can be worn by two, at least three, four styles. And then we got into more of plain prints. Jinka supply may be issue nahi hoga, print may variation ho gara may be uh, limited hi hoga. Because otherwise, you know, it's a, it's a manual process. So there could be variations that you know, printing, colors may thoda variation ho jata hai, kabhi kuch ho jata hai. So we intentionally got into it here. Shuru mein let's get into playing styles itself. So that way, you know, uh, we'll have a consistent uh, supply. So these are few of the things. 
and then of course uh, understanding the return uh, reasons that's uh, one important area so each of the marketplace has a has a defined uh, return section where you can see which product has what uh, ratio why is it coming and all that so uh, those things can also uh, give you good lines the marketplace model doesn't allow you to interact with the customer directly so whatever feedback you may have uh, is based on the reviews that they share or the return reasons they share so we, uh, on those things we make our judgments and of course we get our products uh, tried by our friends and family to understand how you know if there are some basic quality or some uh, issue like that so these are few of the i would say basic things if you can if you manage to uh you know keep uh, on track you can have uh, at least some controllable uh, returns but someone needs to pay attention or return so it's a it's a it's a trap like of things that you know you're just focusing on the top line mera maal bikra mera maal bikra bikra but eventually you gst mein kya file ho raha hai that's a different thing so returns pe kisi ko to dhyan dena hoga aur wo tabhi hota hai jab promoter se drill down hota hai agar promoter us pe dhyan nahi de raha hoga to team ke liye to wo you know wo least adventurous activity hai रिटर्न आया उसको फॉलो क्या रिटर्न था देखो दे वुड बी मोर हैप्पी कि यार ऑर्डर निकल रहा ऑर्डर निकल रहा ऑर्डर निकल रहा बट समवेयर स्पेशली फ्रॉम प्रमोटर्स नीड्स टू फोकस ऑन रिटर्न सेट अप सम इंटरनल प्रोसेस रिटर्न आया है सेम टाइम पे कुन्ना बिकॉज़ दे हैव यू नो क्लेम विंडो आल्सो इन देयर आर रॉन्ग रिटर्न यू नीड टू फाइल द रॉन्ग रिटर्न द क्लेम विद इन अ स्टिपुलेटेड पीरियड ऑफ टाइम बट इफ यू डू नॉट हैव अ प्रोसेस वेयर द रिटर्न्स आर नॉट ओपन सेम डे और नेक्स्ट डे यू मिस आउट ऑन दोस विंडो सो दोस लॉसेस मे ऐड अप यू नो इन योर पीएनएल You need to have some system in place. Key, you know, return aya, so such day could not be and all that. Now things have evolved very much. You need to have a videography also of the packets and all. But okay, but at least you can have some general uh, return system in place. So that's one uh, tip for uh, our future. Great. Yeah. Uh, totally agree. Now, uh, once you have burnt your hands, you know that okay, I'll not do that same thing again to uh, reduce my top lines. Uh, on the front of uh, this is an ever evolving thing so with platform you get visibility but with your own uh, site you get to get in touch with the customer directly or just uh, there for the user so uh, previously it was more platform driven now it is becoming more direct uh, what do you feel that uh, should sharadat be a brand which is uh, more platform led or should it be more uh, direct Uh, to customer led what are some advantages of whatever insight you have sure sure i would say it depends on uh, two important factors uh, one is that uh, what's your product type does it require a lot of description a lot of you know uh, sharing of knowledge for communicating about your product you know some uh, like for our category itself it's a, it's a niche uh, product which has lot of intricacies in their design in those things so those detailing is not entirely possible on market pieces so for that uh, you can explain it better on your social media channel and d2c another important fact is the available resources you have d2c the brand build karna is not a easy thing it's very competitive you are not just competing with other d2c brand you are competing with this market pieces also you know for for search words for getting the space and uh, you know all those things are there so it's a what kind of resources you may have So my like our experience has been here for us the kit was sales mal bik raha hoga to jaan rahi ki business mein humme excitement rahega ki hamara stock sell ho raha hai fir wo so gradually the and we are being a bootstrap company we realized that sales is most critical which will you know keep us uh, motivated to mm-hmm. hang on to stay on the track and market place somewhere gives you sales if you you know press the right lever chahe wo pricing ka ho आपका एनबीए प्लानिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन प्लानिंग में हो गया एडवर्टाइजिंग प्लानिंग योर लिस्टिंग क्वालिटी एंड ऑल दोस इट कैन गिव इट आल्सो इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर प्राइस पॉइंट्स एज आई मेंशन लाइक नाउ तो वी हैव अ डिफरेंट प्राइस पॉइंट फॉर मार्केट प्लेसेस लाइक मिंत्रा नाइका जियो यू नो दे दे हेल्प यू ऑफ इन सेलिंग प्रीमियम हाई प्राइस प्रोडक्ट्स आल्सो बट अमेजॉन फ्लिपकार्ट लाइक आर एक्सपीरियंस इज दैट दे आर मोर मास रिलेटेड मार्केट प्लेस so over there uh, you know so the kind of product you have the kind of pricing you have you can choose the market pc but for us like uh, the kit was sales and uh, our learning was that uh, you know let's let's uh, get sales first we have the conference and but now of course uh, you need to be present on board it can't not be like you know you do not have your direct presence how much you want to focus on building your d2c vertical as i said depends on your resources and the kind of product you want but uh, having your social media pages in place 
getting you know having some marketing in place and having some forum for the customer to interact with the brand that is more uh, important how much sales do you do from your own website and all that is always a you know it's always a good thing to have but it's not easy so it depends on the resources yeah, so that's great, great. Yeah. yeah, that was very insightful. In in brief, I've told that initially when you're down on a lot of resources, DTC, D2C could be uh, huge. Like you can just get vapor in a year. That's when you test the waters on marketplace, test if your product is good. Uh, it is a long cycle. You don't, you can't develop in, in a year and then go in with the uh, D2C model. So uh, very insightful. So now what is it for you guys? Like, uh, what do you think uh, is Shararat now and five years later? Because this was what we discussed was all about how you have come to this stage. Now, what are you right. planning on what you will be in the next two, three, five years? Of your sure, sure. So uh, initially we uh, had focused on uh, mass uh, market uh, much. So we our business was happening majorly on Amazon, Flipkart, Misho, these marketplaces. But now uh, we have, you know, trying to change our positioning from just a mass market to a mustage market. So uh, trying to uh, go a little up. So in that way, we have uh, got onboarded on Ajio, Mitra, these marketplaces. So there we are trying to sell um, high, higher quality and higher, little higher priced uh, products. So that's one uh, positioning change uh, we have done. And the product portfolio also, like, you know, what I'm saying that uh, the our present portfolio, sleeper and loungewear, that also has evolved over time. Initially, we were doing multiple things, but when COVID came in and uh, we saw that people are staying home, so they need good uh, homeware too, or staying at home. So we, that's the space we got in it. And we got good traction. And now it's uh, the way we sense it, that it's going to be a hybrid work model and people want to have a comfortable clothing at home. And, uh, you know, a lot of not just plain designs, so such a story around it. So that's the state we zero down. So around it, we are trying some innovative things, uh, kuch, uh, kuch, styles ke terms mein, kuch marketing ke terms mein. Like we are trying to build ourselves a dope of mind fashion brand. So is ki kuch hum log kar rahe. Mein hamara D2C pe focus on that start. Kar rahe. Like I would say that uh, we had ignored it for too long, but now we have uh, started focusing uh, very well on it. So now, and to begin with, we want to first activate a social media platform. Like building a sales on D2C is something we feel that which will happen over a period of time. And, uh, but we want to have a robust or a social media presence where, you know, people can interact with our brands. So that's the, that's the strategy we want to follow. And in the long run, I would say that, uh, as I said, that uh, in the, we want to be a mustache player, become a strong player for the, in the sleepwear and uh, loungewear category and with a holistic presence that uh, uh, marketplaces may be behind it and uh, put the website may be carrying it. D2B is uh, an offline plan, maybe not immediately uh, in short run, but maybe after a year or so, we would uh, want, definitely want to explore the offline market. Once this COVID situation uh, normalizes a bit more, right now, the you know, regular Kushnagun is coming to the so wo, kode, ek, finally, most of uh, uh, expiry date. So uh, I think that's one vertical we were going to be exploring. And with some funding coming in uh, into the business, so uh, of course we will get aggressive. Great, great. I think this has been uh, quite insightful on how, how you have shared your journey. So uh, let's say on the front of uh, uh, your future plans and uh, you doing some allocations that, okay, we need to go D2C, we need to go uh, e-commerce. Uh, how do you feel evolving yourself personally? Like, uh, do you think you require to upskill yourself into some other domains or, uh, so basically zero to 10 and 10 to 100 is a different uh, journey. You, you might be very good at one and not be at uh, good at other. So what are you doing on your personal self or on your, uh, OG, original group of team to make sure they can handle these uh, challenges because the new challenges are ahead. Yeah, absolutely, you are absolutely correct, uh, Mohit, that we need to keep on investing our, on ourselves, uh, both mentally, for mental uh, well-being as well as for our knowledge uh, base. You know? So what I have done uh, last one year, I can share that uh, I attended few B2C cohorts from Expert Child, Growth School, 
I'm doing one strategy management course from I'm Calcutta. So these are a few of the things uh, which are helping widening my horizon and connecting to that ecosystem. So that's one thing that, uh, and that otherwise also that's uh, one uh, strong suggestion I would like to give to any entrepreneur is to uh, be a part of some community. Otherwise, you know, it becomes lonely at times. So, you know, if you're part of some community, you get that comfort that, you know, your pains and your lows are not yours only. You know, other people also do experiences. So somewhere it, it makes you feel better. It makes you, it gets you some sort of a comfort. So that's uh, one investment I have done on myself. And for our top team also, my partner has even been brushing her uh, garment knowledge, uh, attending some styling programs and uh, those things. And uh, we, another thing which we have uh, have started emphasizing uh, from quite some is building on, building on our team culture. That uh, earlier we were too focused on, you know, just the sales and kya bikrai and all those things. And now we have started uh, focusing on building the right culture in the team. So uh, having a right gender mix uh, in our recruitment, having, uh, you know, right breaks from time to time, getting, setting up some uh, reward and recognition system in place. So those are few of the things we have started uh, doing it, sponsoring some uh, knowledge uh, activities for the uh, team members. So these are some of the investments uh, we are doing on ourselves as promoters and on the team. Like our, our role has evolved now. What we have been doing as promoters five years, six years back, it's different than what we are uh, at, at, now, at this point. So, yeah. It's great. I think I think that is very much required because uh, day in and day out, if we are grilling ourselves, we need to sometimes just come out of it and look at it as a broader horizon. You have rightly put that. Uh, just on the final note, so in your category, uh, how do you build a brand? Like, uh, what are some key things you or processes you do uh, to build a brand so that anyone who has bought Shararat knows that okay. This is a Shararat sleepwear which I've bought and I'll go search that again. So what are things in that domain which you have done to build a core brand around your product? Uh, uh, one thing we feel uh, is to have a good brand name. So if you have a good brand name, so you can do a lot of stories, a lot of you know engagement around it. Like uh, luckily we have found this name, we have all the APA rights uh, over the name. So we want to play on the, uh, we want to, uh, you know, highlight the emotions of being playful and uh, being happy. So that's uh, one thing. And of course, it's not just a marketing image. We want to build it on our product, on our experience uh, front. So the kind of prints uh, we are doing and uh, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the usage we are having, like uh, go one example I tell you, that earlier we were focusing only on a sleepwear category. But gradually we realized uh, the feedback we got from the consumers and all that, you know, people want to uh, wear those uh, comfortable quality, at least for basic outings and all. So we got into it, let's get the prints and the fabric which people can definitely wear at home, but can go for a casual outing also. Outside. So that's one thing we are doing. We are doing but can go for a casual outing also outside. So it's like a bar bhi kind of answer. So at the at single piece itself, but you can, you know, you have a multi-utility of uh, that product. So, so that's something like, you know, we recently sleeve shirt collection launched. So, we have a sleeve shirt link to it, that you can wear it at home. But uh, we gradually realized, uh, based on the feedback, that people are actually wearing it as a kurta. People are, you know, like doing a lot of experimentation. So, go uh, is something, you know, a good insight we have, that you know, the kind of print, the utility is a product we have. Uh, single leg usage jage, multi usage uh, sake, that thing another is the is the price point we definitely don't want to be expensive we want to be reasonably priced with reasonable uh, profit and uh, not hitting too hard on the customer or profit so that's uh, another thing and that can only happen if you have your supply line and your operations streamlined if your costings are in control, your uh, you know, basics of uh, the business are in place, then only you can uh, deliver a good pricing to the customer. So product quality, and of course, that goes without saying that you, know, you have to maintain product quality if you want to survive in the long run. Those things are not highlighting too much, but uh, just a couple of points. Uh, and being a passion brand, that you have to like, keep refreshing yourself. 
फैशन चीज ही ऐसी है कि कस्टमर को भी होता है कि यार अगर रिपीट बाइंग करानी है तो अब क्या नया है ये बड़ा मतलब यू नो वो कुछ ना कुछ नया बट आर लाइन भी नया नीड नॉट बी ओनली इन प्रोडक्ट अगर आपके कुछ मार्केटिंग में नया हो कुछ कंज्यूमर की एक्सपीरियंस में नया हो तो दैट कैन ऑल्सो बी रिफ्रेशिंग एक्सपीरियंस great yaar avinash uh, i think uh, you have summed it up pretty much well that brand is about product quality the customer segment pricing and that newness which you bring every time especially in your domain uh, yeah that's uh, that's pretty much uh, from from my end we have gone pretty deep on uh, how you have scaled what are your plans to scale ahead how as a category you have performed and it's been really uh, kind of you to share deeper insights which will certainly help people uh thank you so much thank you for your time uh and yeah uh, best of luck for shararat uh, there's sure. certainly a good story behind it uh, i watched your video and there's there's a good uh playful story behind it which which people will admire so yeah best of luck thank you so much for your time yeah thanks mohit and i hope our interaction helps out the fellow viewers staying or anyone who is planning to start alexander sambar Thanks, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.